Praise the Lord today, saints of the Most High God. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is good. He is worthy of all of our praise, adoration, and thanksgiving today. Today is the 18th of February, 2020, here on Spreaker Radio. We're bringing you the King's Road broadcast. Today's message, The Journey. Oh, we're all on a journey. Amen. Everybody on this earth is on a journey. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the journey today. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We so bless you today for your word and for your reminding us that we are on a journey, Lord. We need to remember this, that you are bringing us deeper into yourself, deeper into the call upon our lives, Lord, all of us. Show us great and mighty things today, Lord, we pray. And we pray, Lord, as we journey down this King's Road that you have established, Lord, the road you walk, Jesus, that we will be mindful, Lord, that you are right here with us. You are right with us, Lord. You are leading us. You are guiding us, directing us. And you are keeping the enemy at bay. You are doing that, Lord. You are. Hallelujah. Help us. Help your people today, Lord, that we don't reach out beyond you, Lord, and try to do things ourselves. Because that's just like reaching out in the self man Lord and I don't want to do that Sharon doesn't want to do that none of your people who really love you Lord want to do that we want to wait upon you for as we wait upon you Lord our strength is renewed like the eagle hallelujah help us to remember that Lord in this journey and let us just worship you and praise you today and thank you for all good things for all things everything give thanks thank you Lord Crush that serpent dragon under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 5, Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are confident, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we, while we are at home, Whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. In other words, we're absent from that sight. We can't see Jesus with our eyes like we see each other. Like we see the road we're driving down in our car. Okay. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay. By sight. This faith walk that we're on is not a seeing with our natural eyes, okay? Now, we see many things manifest with our natural eyes that God will speak to us. He'll show us things. Uh, he might tell you, you're, you might be ministering to someone, and in your ministry, after three or four months or whatever, after a certain amount of time of ministry with people, the Lord will begin to show you about people, and he might tell you, uh, so-and-so is going to do this, or so-and-so is going to say that, you know what I mean? And then that's the Lord prompting you, you know, to be aware of what they're going to say. And then they say it. So he'll show you beforehand, you see what I'm saying? Where you're, and then you'll, you'll hear it with your ears, exactly what God said. You're walking by faith and not by sight, okay? And Paul says, we are confident. I love how Paul wrote the Holy Spirit writing through him. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Okay? In other words, I'd rather be just with the Lord and be out of this body. Okay? <laughs> and how many times have we uh, felt yeah. that in the journey where you just, you just, yeah, you just want to be with the Lord. That's it. Okay? Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him and that's the important thing exactly to and be accepted by him that's right that's right not by people or by anything right. but by him right that's right labor <coughs> wherefore we labor paul says okay to labor to strive to study to be earnest okay we labor in the journey saints we're laboring 
we're learning and we do many times get in the way of what God wants to do. Amen. In this journey. So that we're learning. Don't do that again. You know. And the Bible teaches us if we read the word, we get instruction from the word. Be slow to speak, right? In other words, sometimes people will be talking to us and we want to start talking and get ahead of what they're saying because we know what they're fixing to say. And God says, don't do that. Just let them finish. See what I mean? It's hard sometimes to let them finish because you know what they're going to say, but you have to let them finish. And then it's just something in the spirit, you know. So on this journey, <coughs> there are many things happening. So we're going to be talking about this. And right. listening is the important thing, Listening, too. it is, it is. You can find out a lot of things by just listening. <coughs> That's right. Just listening. When the Lord opens a door, sometimes he'll just have you listen to somebody. Right. And what they're saying. That's right. And then the more that you just let them talk, he reveals mm -hmm. what's going on. Or he'll right. reveal their hearts or what they're thinking about or whatever by them talking and so he might prompt you in your spirit just let them talk just listen to them right. and then he'll insert things in there along the way you know <laughs> right. that he wants that seed to be sown that's right it's real important for us to pay attention to his spirit mm -hmm. even when we're talking to somebody right exactly and it's hard for the human nature to keep the mouth shut that's right yeah that's right that's why we walk by faith because the human nature is always wanting to override or right. over this or over Give that. Give the explanation yeah. without knowing all the facts. <laughs> so know. it's like the Lord says, mm. I need to teach you to keep your mouth shut, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and listen to my spirit, you know. That's a hard lesson for the flesh to learn. That's right. That's right. So we're going to be, right now, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11. Because this is, we're walking by faith on this journey. Not by sight. You know, if I think, if, if my wife starts talking to me and I think she's going a certain place in her speech with me, a certain area, and I interrupt her, and she wasn't going to the place I thought, you see what I mean? And that's why it's important just to let him speak. Right. Because the person that you're talking to, you might have an idea, something, they're going to say certain thing, and they're not thinking that at all. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's like the Lord uh, teaches, you don't know it all. Yeah. Right. He'll that's teach right. us, you know, you don't know it all. You need to just be quiet and listen. Listen, that's right. And let what I'm trying to bring forth come forth. That's right. And not quench it or whatever. That's right. You know? That's right. Hallelujah. Begin reading, honey. And let's just go through this chapter and look at this, what is written here. Hallelujah. Hebrews. 11. Yes. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right. So what happens as we have faith, the Lord brings into light the evidence of that faith, of that belief. Hallelujah. But for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Mm. And they were. That's right. He spoke the word, didn't he? Mm. And things were formed. Amen. Things were created, right? So the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Praise God. By faith. Now here we go. Here's Abel. Talking about Abel's journey. Listen. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Okay. And what Amen. was that sacrifice? A, a living. Lamb. Right, it was a living sacrifice. A living Amen. sacrifice. Amen. Cain 
offered the works of his hands. Right. Now, this is an important lesson right here. Cain offered the works of his hands to the Lord. Right. That wasn't a, a good sacrifice according to the Lord. He wants a living sacrifice. He wants us. Hallelujah. That's what that symbolized. Us. And he wants me, all of us. Let me let me share what the Lord just showed me right now. I was thinking about Cain here. Because Cain, the Bible says, by the sweat of your brow. Right. Okay. What is sweat? When you have an engine or you have something, it generates heat, right? And and our bodies could be like look at like into an engine and it's generating heat and it sweats. Okay, and the sweat is like the waste product generated by the the energy of the body. Well, see, when man fell, okay, he's fallen. See what I'm saying? The body is going to go back to the ground. This body, if Jesus comes today and we're alive before, you know, when he comes, then we'll be changed in a moment and twinkling of an eye. But if he tarries a hundred years, this body is going to go to the ground because it's fallen. See? In the new kingdom, we're going to have a body like his body. Flesh and bone that will never die. Hallelujah. It's going to be a physical body, but it's going to be like his body, which will never die. So Cain, he brought of the, the fruit of his labor, the fallen nature, the, the sweat of his brow. You see what I'm saying? And so Abel brought the living sacrifice that God created as a substitute See, and that's what God wanted. You know, I find it interesting because before the fall, there was a garden. Yeah. In the garden right. of Eden. God had him tending it. Right. But he didn't say that you'll labor by the sweat of your brow no, until after, after the fall. The fall. That's right. So it must have been a very smooth uh, joyful, joyful, easy yeah. way to do the garden, That's you know, right. and it just it was, grew. There was no it, sweat. Yeah, it would just grew and stuff, and even by uh, giving birth, right? It was after the fall that the woman would have the pain. That's right. See, That's right. So it's like, and the Lord's going to bring it all back around. That's right. That's right. To that beginning. Yeah, now you're giving birth in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's painful. That can be painful. Uh -huh. But it's not like giving birth physically. Okay. I don't know. I'm not a woman. so. <laughs> you know. But anyway, women know that. Okay. But it's that's interesting not. about that because I was just thinking, you know, Father, you know, you're going to bring it all back around to that. Mm -hmm. Where the garden and everything just, <coughs> it just comes, you know. The Lord's bringing it back. He's, re he's going to restore that. Right. To its original deal. And so. It's, I know when it's we're, interesting. I know when we're gardening. It's like. It just seems. It, there's an effort to it. Okay, You have to t till the ground. And, and the effort of planting the plants. And putting them in and everything. But it's not like. We're toiling for you know. Mm -hmm. it, it's more of a, an enjoyment. We enjoy gardening. And the Lord helps us in that and we and watch he it prospers it flourish and like those, crazy and those days when we go out there and see all that fruit and we're just so happy and seeing it you know and we're kind of tending it and whatever and the lord just blesses it it's like the jolly green giant garden yeah that's right that's and right six pound or more cabbage and it's just awesome to watch it grow that's right so by faith abel offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice than cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. See, his life still speaks today. Amen? In verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased that he pleased God. God. And what did he walk by? Faith. By faith. Okay. By faith, Enoch. 
by faith, saints. Keep this in mind. Now read one more verse, and then we're going to go somewhere else. You know, the Lord's just shown me about that, what I said before about the garden, is that when we walk by the Spirit, things just, we do enter into that, so to speak, Garden of Eden place. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that yeah. It, it, it's like he just showed me that as we walk in the Spirit, we do... That's the journey we're on. We do see? go into that place where things just flow. That's right. They just they just grow. They That's just right. come up, and they, you know it's none nothing we have to toil about. That's right. You know. That's right. The toil came after the fall. That's right. The fallen nature. The That's toil, where the toil comes. The toil is in the flesh. Right. The what did you say it was? Just the peace. Let's call it the peace, right? Is in the spirit. When you do, when we do our labor, physical labor on our property that we have to do, if in we're the walking, spi- if we're doing right. it in the spirit, it's just like we have supernatural energy right. and just joy, and it just flows, and it right. just and it gets done so fast. Right. It's amazing. So, so we say that, and now we're saying it to the listener, to the brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a job. You're working your job. If you do that physical labor, what's required of you in the spirit, see, it's less of a toil. It is, really. The day goes by faster. It does, really. Because you're in the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. And when the mind is set on the Lord and it's spiritual things. The Lord will make that job. He'll make that work you do, that physical labor, perfect. I mean, it'll be better than anyone else's. It'll be just wonderful. Okay. Now, read one more verse. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that that diligently diligently seek seek him. him. Oh, hallelujah. It's impossible. To See, please God amen. without faith. That's right. That's right. Let me Boy, go. Boy, I that tell up. you, that's that's a real biggie right there. Mm. Eleven six. Hallelujah. Praise God. He is a rewarder. Okay, a rewarder. A rewarder. Yeah. He rewards. He rewards those who <laughs> diligently. Seek him to search out, investigate, crave, demand. Okay, you know, we grab a hold of God. David David said, make haste, O Lord, okay, to deliver me. Make haste, O God. You know, he, he's crying out to God. Make haste, O Lord. And let me go back there and read that. And then and the then, one that grabbed a hold of the angel and would not let the angel go till he blessed him. Yeah, that's Jacob. <laughs> when he's wrestling with the angels. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let me read this real quick. Uh, Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto me. My voice, when I cry unto thee, I cry unto thee. That means it's like you're, it's when you accost somebody. Okay? You accost somebody. See? Crave, demand. Those that diligently seek the Lord. You might have questions in your walk. You're, you, God's doing mysterious things and, you, and you're not understanding and you need understanding. Well, God knows you need understanding. And the reason he doesn't answer a lot of times is because he wants you to keep having that where you, you're going to him and you're saying, God, show me. God, help me. God, you're crying out to God. He likes to hear his children cry out to him. See, not like a two-year-old or a three-year-old stomping their feet, but as one who really wants to know him, really wants to be in his presence, see, and be right with him. Hallelujah. Amen. And so by faith, okay, no, no, but but without faith, verse 6 again, it is what? Impossible. impossible. It, it's impossible, okay? You could not do it. Impotent. Impossible. Unable. Weak. Unable. You're unable to, to, to please, please him, him. Without faith. For he that cometh to God must believe. That he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now go to chapter 12. Next chapter. And. 
Hallelujah. We're going to begin in verse. Let's see here. <clears throat> We're on this journey. Okay. All of us together. The body of Christ. And during the journey. Let's begin at verse number. Eight. Hold on. Let's go back to verse. Verse seven. If, now, during the journey, during the journey. Now, go ahead. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Now, you know what just hit me right there? If ye endure chastening. Okay, so that must mean there is a possibility you won't endure chastening. Yeah, endure. Yeah, that's right. we can turn away from chastening. We can rebel against chastening right. and run away from chastening. Endure but, there means to stay under. Yeah, but so, this says if ye endure, chastening, bear if you bear it. God mm. dealeth with you. Don't you want God to deal with you? I want God to deal with me. Thank In you, Lord. Any air, any or every area. That's right. If you endure chastening, if you bear it, if you persevere in it, you say, Lord, just keep coming. Come, keep Lord. dealing with me, Lord, because you know you're his son or daughter. God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Right. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, mm. then are ye bastards uh -uh. and not sons. Okay. Illegitimate. Mm-hmm. Illegitimate. Okay. Furthermore, verse nine, we have we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Oh hallelujah! So oh hallelujah! If we endure chastening, God deals with us, and we live. That's right. To subordinate, okay. To be in subjection. To subordinate ourselves unto God. Okay. To obey. To be under obedience. Okay. Be in subjection to. Submit ourselves unto God. During this journey. During this traveling. That we're on this path. In the kingdom. We're in the kingdom. Okay. Now keep reading. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. That's earthly fathers. But he, our heavenly father, for our profit. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Oh, hallelujah. Partakers of his holiness. So that chastisement, the heavenly chastisement, is so that we will be partakers of his holiness and be cleansed and be purged and everything that's not of him be purged out. Let's talk about this word in this context, the whole be partakers of his holiness because when you read that I just I had this vision in my mind's eye of God on his throne, Jesus immovable immovable just very, just right there. Are we like that? Or are we movable? Right? He Partakers of that. his holiness. See, I mean, if if I'm really just by every little thing that happens in my life, just tossed to and fro, I mean, I got to, I, I recognize that right now. See, that's, I want to be like Christ. Solid. Yeah. Staunch. Yeah. Unmovable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, unmovable. Okay. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Praise God. I want to be that, man. You Hallelujah. Know, a lot of times <clears throat> people want to move God out of his, uh, what he's set down as a principle. Right. <laughs> they want to get him to change that principle. And he's like, no, I'm not changing that principle. Right. Those have been set down before the beginning of time. And that's something you ain't going to move me on. He said, I require you to obey that and to walk in that. Praise God. Praise God. Verse 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. 
Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 12. You know, I just had to... Go ahead. I just had that little deal of... Uh, who, what is that little deal? Andy Griffin? Andy Griffith? Yeah. I oh, remember yeah. a little episode <laughs> we watched on YouTube the other day. And his son was hanging out with this kid. Spoiled kid. A spoiled brat kid. <laughs> and the kid was telling him how he got his way. <laughs> and he was teaching him how to throw the fits. And stomp his feet and hold his breath and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> to get his way, his dad would do whatever he wanted him to do. And that's how... Kids are being raised now. That's right. Well, they have been. And all along. And that's the deal, see. You can't be spoiled. No. People tend to do that way with God. They want God but to spoil them. But like you said, you saw the vision. He's there. He's He is solid. He is immovable. It's I mean, like that he, word he, holiness, it means so much. But when you read that verse, that's what I thought about. Because... He's holy. Yes. God is holy. Pure. I mean, no one is going to move him off his throne. No. Nobody. No. Okay. I mean, people try to make God do this, make God do that. And God's like, I'm holy. I'm set apart from all of y'all. And okay? his I'm will so is what's going to be pure. done. I'm so holy. That's God right. says, it. And, and I don't have to be moved by anything. But, but see, the scripture teaches us there are things that move God. It move the yeah. heart of God, yeah. And that one thing we're talking about today in this journey is faith. Believe God. Mm-hmm. Boy, this is powerful. But the sport brat little stomping the yeah, feet, the stomping holding the, the feet. breath. Yeah, oh Lord, like forgive us. You do God what do what I want you to do. Right. When I want yeah. you to do it. That's right. <laughs> no. Oh, praise God. But, you know, we need to have a holy reverence. Awe. For our Father. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because he's got our oh, best interest in mind. Bala bala he bala says bala. he does everything. Thank you, Jesus. With the thought that he's going to do the good yeah. for us. Amen. And the good may not necessarily be what we think is the good That's in our right. life. Right. But he knows best. He can see down the road right. with the decisions. That's he can right. see down the road. That's why he keeps prompting. And he'll put those you know, impressions in our spirit and, and speak to us. Praise his holy name. And he'll show us if we start to go a wrong way, he'll give a big old red flag in our spirit and we'll know, oh, he's not pleased with something. Seek him and find out what it is, right, you know. exactly. Verse 12 and 13, read right here. 12 and 13. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. And make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, surrender to God. Surrender. Okay. <laughs> Lift up the hands which hang down. In other words, begin to worship God. Hallelujah. And just praise Him. In the Spirit. Oh, praise God. See. And I remember I told that story about the time when I was working for that guy. And, it, man, it was such a hard thing. The guy promised me help. There was so much work. But how did I lift up the hands that hang down? I, I worked harder. You see what I mean? When God showed me, he said, John, I'm your reward. I'm your shield. I'm your strength. You know, not what this guy promises you, okay, over here. But but me, John, me. I, I am all these things to you. And so that was that was making me work better and harder see when i heard god say that to me and also lift up the hands which hang down you know there's and the feeble knees there's a lot out there that have their hands hang down maybe they've got a situation you know and they're in need or whatever and their hands are (coughs) hanging down and they've got feeble knees kind of weak or whatever this is an admonition for us to help those Mm -hmm. help those 
and make straight paths for your feet. Don't be on a crooked path. That's right. That's right. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. So, all right, we're on the straight path of holiness, all right? Someone comes in there that's that's lame. They need help. They need healing. Well, if you're on a crooked path, how in the world are you going to, the Lord going to use you to do that? It's a straight path. That's right. That that's going to bring the healing. That's right. Praise you know? the Lord. And as you you, the lame come into your view, come into your path. You know. I believe the Lord will bring healing. That's right. Through that, through your straight path. That's right. That's right. That's right. Your straight path. Amen. You're on a straight path of holiness. God will bring in that healing. That's right. How else can it happen anyways? Right. If you're on a crooked path. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at that again. Verse 13. You could talk about that for an hour. And make straight paths for your feet. That's an admonition. Yeah. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Then he says, follow peace with all men. And Holiness. There's that word again. Without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Right. And a lot of people do that by going off after other things, other gods in their life, and they become a spiritual fornicator, mm. a profane person like Esau, and, and have that attitude too. Give me what I want in my flesh. Mm. because this spiritual thing over here that God gave me doesn't even matter to me as long as I get what I want in my flesh. That's Esau. For ye know how that afterward, afterward he would have inherited, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. See, Esau, we're not in that camp anymore. Okay? We must remember that when God gives us instruction, we be obedient to God and do what he tells us to do. Okay? Now, Esau, he couldn't get back to the place because he sold his birthright to his brother for a morsel of meat one bowl of food think about that back then boy the birthright was I mean it was like if you, you knew you had the birthright you were in line you know what I mean to inherit everything well God had already chosen before they were born that Jacob was going to the younger will rule over the the older see that's what God said that's another whole message, but Esau lost it because of his stomach. So let's not lose what God has given us because of the flesh. Crucify the flesh. Amen? Crucify the flesh. Say, Lord, take your cross right now to this flesh of mine. I don't want to lose what you've given me thus far, and I don't want to lose or miss out on anything you want to give me today, the rest of this day, and in the future. Amen. I want what you want to give me, Lord, in this journey. And Lord, Lord I just ask for your presence. Lord, I ask for you. That's what Moses said. If, if, if your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going no one more step. See, and we want God's presence. Amen. He's holy. But 
if he comes too close, you can't do anything. You just have to just kind of like a limp noodle on the ground, you know what I mean? But he'll give you the strength to keep going, you know. Have, but we've been to that place, right, where, and I remember one time, I'll tell you this story, we were battling, man, through some serious, serious things. It was early in our marriage, but we were just really growing in God, and we were learning how to surrender. We're still learning how to surrender today. Praise God and just bless God every day. But I prayed. I grabbed Sharon and I just grabbed her and just put her in a big embrace and I just said, Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will just fill this house with your holy angels. Right? And man, bam! He did it. Right there. Saints, we could not even walk. It took us like 20 minutes to get and this was just a little house it was only 900 square foot home and it took us 20 minutes to get from the hallway to the couch you remember that yeah i mean i am serious and then that's we what i move. and that's what i mean god we could can, only just sit there <laughs> <laughs> and it lasted for like five or i don't know long hours i mean it was just all afternoon and that's what i'm talking god can so reveal himself to you where you just cannot move because his presence is so holy. He's he's fixed. I mean, he's holy. And we desire that. We want that. And he says, all you have to do is set your gaze on me in the spirit. And you can have that. And our gaze can be on God while we're doing the dishes or mowing the grass or driving that forklift, Right? Or, or whatever our job is, our gaze can be on the Father. Hallelujah. You see. And, and, and Jesus at the Father's right hand, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in this journey. We have it in us. Jesus is in us. Okay? Now, we'll make this a part one, and we'll do a part two tomorrow on the word for today. Okay? On the journey. Because there's so much here. The guys is, I mean... We don't want to be an Esau. All right, let me tell another story. When I was a little boy, I was a rebellious little boy, but I remember I was about 10 years old. And my oldest sister, she took care of us. You know, my mother worked nights and my father worked days. And they were going, she always, every weekend in the summertime, it was going to the zoo, going to Herman Park, going to, you know what I mean? It was just kid stuff she would take us everywhere and, and but my friends wanted to go play and there was this bio by where i grew up and they had a storm sewer big old storm sewer and they said we're not gonna go and so i got in the station wagon and then they said we're going and they were yelling and they were we're gonna go to the to the pipe you know and and, and i yelled at my sister I said, stop the car stop the car and i jumped out and she took off, and then when she took off, they said, "Ah, oh, we're not gonna go." And I was stuck there. You see what I mean? I was, I just missed it. I just missed it. You follow what I'm saying? And I tell that story to say, you, I, we all in the body of Christ, let us be content where God has us. Let us be content in what He has us doing. And don't let we don't want to miss right. what He wants to do. And don't let anybody veer you off right, of that path right. either. And I, we don't want to miss what God wants to do with us this day. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it by being an Esau. Trying to make a deal with somebody or with God. You follow what I'm saying? When God tells you how to walk and he's shown us how to walk, saints, all of us, it's by faith. Amen? Let's stay in that path on this journey in faith, believing, trusting in him. Hallelujah. Because he will not fail. He has never failed us, ever. And he never will. Never. Amen. He can't. It's impossible for him to fail. And he'll do it. So this is part one, the journey. Tomorrow we'll do part two. And we'll continue. We're going to continue here in Hebrews 12. So you might want to read Hebrews 12. Because we're on this journey, and there's a place where we're going to. And that's all I'll say today. Okay? We'll, we'll do the rest tomorrow. And Father God, thank you. 
Seal this word to the heart of those who are hearing it and receiving it. Lord, you said in, the, in these days there be a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. Oh God, make us hungry for your word. Not up to hear it, Lord, to hear it and to be obedient to it. That's hearing your word, Lord. By being obedient to your word. Let that be in all of our lives, Lord. That obedience that you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. And crush the serpent dragon under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to contact us, <coughs> you can write the King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. The King's Road 2000 at gmail.com. And there's also on this link many other links to the blogs and the different websites and the different MP3 sites where there's lots of word. Amen. That will comfort that will challenge, maybe even convict. If there's an area that needs conviction. And also, I want to thank the Lord for those that support this work, that count it important to God and important to them. And they do support it. And you know, the Lord is so good to keep us supplied and keep this broadcast going Amen. you know I would pray I said Lord I pray you provide this payment for this radio broadcast before it's due and he did Amen. a day before it was due Amen. he provided for it Hallelujah. and I you know God has kept us over the years he's kept us on different avenues and different ways and just miraculously sometimes And he keeps us going for as long as he wants us to speak. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, I thank him for the body of Christ that, you know, they have the heart to give and they have the heart to help. Right. You know, even if they see that we need help physically in this natural realm, they help. That's the heart of God. Amen. You know? And that's the way we should all be. Amen. In this life. That's the heart of God. Amen. You know, because the Lord's very plain to tell us, if you see your brother or your sister in need, and you know about it, and you don't do anything, you don't lift your finger to help or do anything, He says, how can the love of God dwell in you right. that's how God looks at it mm -hmm. how can my love dwell in you if you just ignore that right and you don't do what is my heart for you to do see that's that's for all of us hallelujah that's for every last one that professes to be his that's right we need to keep that in mind and keep this message in mind too don't forget it and Lord I pray you don't let them forget it those that listen hallelujah and this message will even go out into the spiritual realm, Lord, yeah. and it will do what you have sent it, sent it to, to do. do. It will not return void. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's his word. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is so good. He loves us all so, so very much. And we must remember this and, you know, just keep our focus upon the Lord and let him be our stay. Hallelujah. And let us not veer to the right or to the left just stay going forward with jesus father god thank you again the lord bless you keep you make his holy face shine upon you the lord our god lift up his holy countenance on you grant you peace and the lord be gracious unto you in his name his authority his character and his dominion his rule and his reign be in and upon your life today as you go forward conquering and to conquer in this journey hallelujah in the mighty humility, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah.